I know it's been a while since I've actually like done a video and I'm sorry, but hey, now that we're here, let's talk about Card Vanguard Divine Season 2. <laughs> so now that uh, the Bushiro strategy presentation has come and gone, and we've gotten more information about the upcoming Season 2, which is at the time of this recording, just a week away. So I uh, kind of have my own thoughts about it and I wanted to share it with you before we actually got into the season proper. So with that, let's kind of get started. So first off, I want to kind of give my own thoughts on all the, you know, the now announced destined ones that we have uh, <laughs> been been revealed to. We have over the entire week prior to the strategy presentation, we kind of got like drip marketed uh, their designs and information. So, well, we kind of got the designs and who they are, and then we got the full reveal of the strategy presentation. So I want to kind of give my uh, thoughts on them and let's run them down, starting with the first one, which was already announced prior to Season 2, which is Kuon Aikawa, with his main unit, the Destin One of Infinity, Lebidras. I think that's how you pronounce it. So his bio is that he's a transfer student into Akina in Suo's class. He owns the Destin One of Infinity. He is called the Genius High Schooler by the public due to winning contests and hard to grasp what he's thinking with Mysterious Aura. Uh, so, yeah, he's just the, um, the Mysterious Boy. He's the pretty boy of the season. I mean, there's nothing else really to say until we know what he, until we get more into it. <laughs> uh, there's not really a lot into his uh, small bio. I think his, uh, his unit looks pretty interesting. I would say there's nothing like it so far in Stoikea, which is, pretty cool but i have a feeling that he has been pretty much the gigantic fake out of the season and you'll see why in just a bit all right so next we've got a uh, yuna salonji who has the destined one of su supremacy uh this got what i'm i'm rereading these names for the first time i'm sorry <laughs> in a while so list kafael which as you can see is a uh, definitely the unit of all time like, I, I kind of jokingly said, man, this is probably like the, it's like, man, they actually just made, like, the equivalent of Neko arc, bruh. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's kind of go into her thing. She runs Lyrical. She is, uh, I just know she has, like, paws on her jacket shirt thing. That's interesting. Uh, but here's the list. Uh, she's a first-year high school student. And owner of the Destiny One of Supremacy, she's a secret idol otaku who is a big fan of uh, Mikoto, who, if you don't remember, is an idol. I know it's hard considering she doesn't do any idol things on screen. Uh, she's also part of the student council and good at both studies and sports. I mean, just kind of a basic pro premise of it. She is, she's goofy. I think a lot of people kind of confused her for a lot of when it first started so i mean when she first got revealed and this this look of hers right here definitely doesn't help the uh allegations <laughs> uh but i think a lot of people kind of like not really feeling her destined one because you know you're called supremacy you're in lyrical and you look like a rejected strawberry shortcake character so i don't know what you they were thinking here there's probably like some interesting lore going on there that would make her the one of supremacy because i i don't know how you look at look at this over here and think yeah you're you're the supreme one <laughs> up next we've got uh senka kanai senka kanai <coughs> excuse me uh it's kanai kanai i think that's how it's pronounced it's been a while uh with the destined one of exceedance in power in power Impaudio again, sorry. I'm gonna mess up these uh notifications. It's been a while since I've actually done a video, so yeah, this is gonna take a second. So she's a pro Vanguard fighter which owns the Destiny One of Exceedance. She is Nao's childhood friend, one of the good skilled young fighters, and a battle holic with a short fuse. So if the if we were so, turns out, no, now is not the, uh, Nimona. Turns out she's probably the Nimona. In fact, you know, which is both funny and concerning, because now there's two of them. 
uh, you know, she was hinted at in her now as focus episode in season one, and now she's actually there. What's surprising that she's Brent Gate and she has the the unit that looks similar to Messiah. I mean, if you look at Messiah, like I mean, Messiah didn't have a giant gun, but this is as close to Messiah as you can get, considering the, the circumstances of Messiah itself. So, uh, her unit is pretty interesting. I'm really surprised that she's a Brankit user, and I kind of want to know how that uh, friendship really kind of like went along back in the day. So hopefully, uh, we get more uh, information about that. Next, we've got a uh, Kyoma Kurosaki, who is Dragon Empire, and he owns the Destined One of Scales, Alequilibra. Alequilibra? Alequilibra, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, he's the Vice CEO of the Kyokura Group, uh, owner of the Destined One of Scales, best friend since college days of Taizo, who is the CEO of the group. Man of few words, he's the cool but reasonable type. So... Man, people did a lot. I remember, like, after he got revealed, people did a lot of searching. It's like, oh, it turns out he's someone that taizo has been talking to throughout the series up to this point, and now he is finally, you know, shown to the world, right? Which is pretty interesting. So he is effectively just a, a you know, lower on the total pole of Taizo. So it, I'm curious of, like, what his deal is what his supposed wish is going to be, because I, I didn't fail to mention it, like, they probably all have their own unified wish, so they have their own goals and agendas, so who knows how that's going to go. Uh, how... Okay, so, I, I guess I can probably put it here right now. So, now that we've gone through four, let's, let me just kind of get my own thoughts on the people we don't know. Because we've had four new people and we have two new people. So on the new people, uh, there's not a lot to really work with. Like, uh, Seka has a has a lot of uh, conceptual idea because she has connections with now. Senka, excuse me, she has connections with now. Uh, but everyone else is kind of just basic, right? Like. Um, Kuan is just the pretty boy who's pretty much like here to be the the eye candy for the guy for girls and the guys. No, <laughs> uh, we've got a secret fan girl who is a a potential Urara clone, which is something. And then we've got a uh, Kurosaki here who really has only been hinted at, not really like actually had screen time, so. There's not a lot to really go on, and I think that's a an issue I'm gonna talk about later about this upcoming season. But first, let's talk about the other two members. So, as the vines had, we had four new characters, and then we had two returning members. So, the first returning one is actually Jinky Muke, Mukai, who owns the Decimal Protection Alden. So if you don't, if you haven't seen any of the past Vanguard seasons, Jinky is one of the major characters in Carpet Vanguard Will Dress. The season, the, the arc, I guess you could say, right before Divines. Uh, he is the organizer of the Deluxe Tournament, who, which is a kind of invite tournament to decide who is the strongest player. And alongside the AI named known as Gi, created by his deceased big brother Shingi, he is the mastermind of the Uniformers project, which the Uniformers were effectively the main antagonist of the Will Dress arc. So he has now come back with Alden, and if you've been around a D D series for a while, you know Alden is a card that's been around since set one. It got a form in Will Dress season three. And now it's back with effectively Alden's third form. Alden now has probably more new forms than most uh, units in the entire game. In fact, Alden now has more new forms than uh, than a, a Sarah Snow. So keep that in mind, prison players. A a discount, a okay 
triple rare from set one has now more has now more forms than you that's that's perfect but this is something interesting here so with the returning characters there's a lot of like actual story beats that can be played so i haven't gone into my world dress review yet i'm still kind of trying to figure out how i want to approach that but one of the things about jinky was that i felt like his story never really got finished it felt like it, it finally had an idea and then just kind of fell apart at the end. So him coming back means that they might be trying once again to really go back into that storyline and try to actually do something interesting in it, which I approve of. I know people are like, uh, I don't want anything from Will Dress coming back, but I was actually interested in having characters come back from Will Dress that really didn't get their stories like settled. Right? I think Helona got her story settled. But I don't think like characters like Jinky or God forbid Sophie really got any story settled. So I felt like those characters probably needed more time to cook. And I'm glad it's Jinky because uh, 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 Epstein Bell over there can sit in the corner. <laughs> but I'm glad that it's him and I'm really interested in like how his story is going to play out in the season. And speaking of stories that play out, uh, we've got our final faded one, which is Hikari. In a surprise twist that no one saw coming, Hikari is the last faded one, and she is the Dark States user. Which, if you've, which you know, at the time of this recording, set two of the vines has released in the global market, meaning that Leah Lamorta is now officially there. Which, oh, which, obviously, funny, funnily enough also lines up with the fact that the dub version of Vanguard Divines hit episode 10, which means this is now no longer a, uh, a, uh, a spoiler. So thankfully, I am perfectly fine with saying, yeah, in season one, remember, Hikari's future self came back with Leah LaMorta, and now here we are in season two, which Hikari now has a, a destined one, which is the destined one of time, Liel Odium. Now, what's interesting is that Liel Odium and Liel Morta are technically the same Liel, but from different timelines. And what's interesting is that the definition of Liel Morta and Liel Odium is uh, very interesting. I forget what the uh, definition of Amorta is in Greek. I think it's Greek, but I mean the definition of Odium means hatred, which that is a very interesting title, considering that she's not only, uh, she's not only back with Hikari, but she is the cover card of Set Five, which kind of implies she's going to be at least one of the final hurdles for our uh, faded ones. And her, so let's kind of, I'm starting for long. Let's get to her uh, little thing, which is. Uh, she's a third year middle schooler, which owns the Destin Water Time. She keeps being in and out of hospital during the week bottle, but was a able to become healthy due to her brother Akina's efforts. She seems to be still buddy buddy with her big brother, but dot 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 question mark. Uh, this is interesting because at the end of season one, the whole point of Akina participating in Fairy Clash was to heal Hikari, and now here we are in the Destin Showdown, and Hikari is now. Effectively in danger once again because we don't know what the heck uh, this new plushie is whole plan is So that's gonna be interesting about what the point of all of this really is <laughs> which kind of brings me to a Big question I have for the season Which that question is be with that with that question being What is the actual? Plot. How is this plot going to transcribe? Well, I have actually, excuse me, I actually have like multiple points. But my first point is now that we have a 6v6, how is this actually going to play out? Are we going to like have like each faded one versus destined one until either they all go out, kind of like a, a team, a team battle, which that would be interesting, but how, you know. I, I fear how that would work because it could be like an, a rehash of Divine Season 2 where it's like 
Defiant Season 1 where Hikari actually ends up fighting most of the faded ones until the end anyway. So a lot of them don't really get... So like the other ones probably just job until Hikari shows up and beats them all. I don't know. And I don't know because the other reason I'm concerned about this season is time. Time management. If this season is going to be about 12, 13 episodes like all the other the D era seasons of Comrade Vanguard, is there going to be enough time to really develop our characters? Because Divine Season 1, while I think it did a great job of developing these characters, only really had four new characters to deal with. And then we had three new, three old characters, technically four. I've, I forgot you, Mr. Hero Man. Uh, but, you know, we had. I mean five. I forgot uh, Shinobu existed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot Shinobu existed. But technically we had five returning characters, but we mostly focused on these four right here. Now, uh, now, uh, Suo, uh, Akina, and Mikoto. And then we had, uh, Hikari in the background until the back half where a lot of her development came through and a lot of the plot started to go through everything which Hey, that's perfectly fine, but The problem I have with The problem I had with Will Dress Going deeper into a season was that it added a lot of characters and didn't really know how to kind of pace them around And of course then season 3 happened and it is considered one It is considered a hot mess for one of those reasons being this like no one really got enough development time that felt perfectly content so that's a big issue and if we have 12 to 13 episodes i i just really don't know how we're going to cram in effectively the same thing again where we have four four new characters one character who was part of the issue of Wildress, one character who we thought the story was over with, in which it feels kind of like a rehash, and a adapt with our four other characters, plus giving these two some actual development time as well. That's 12 characters, and we got 13 episodes to develop each of them one by one, assumedly. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But that's a very big question going into the season is like, I don't know how you finish this in 12, 13 episodes. Now, if there's like a plot twist, like, oh, there's actually like 15, 16 episodes, maybe. But I, I've i always had a problem with the Wilderness seasons being like, they've been so scared to go past just a single core and not actually do more. So that's my biggest concern going into the season is... Is there going to be enough time for the show itself to really develop these characters? Outside of that, so far, this, uh, I guess you could say new team, quote unquote, the new director, has done a pretty good job of balancing the, the first ensemble cast. And I'm willing to at least give them a try and see how they do with the second ensemble cast. Uh, but yeah. That is basically all I really have to say. Um, overall, I'm still excited for the Divine Season 2. I think this is going to be really fun, really cool. I'm excited for the new ride lines, what they could potentially do. Uh, and really, I just want to have a fun Vanguard season where we go two for two with good seasons, right? <laughs> that's that's the whole point. Just go two for two and we're good. As, as long as the season's good, as long as the anime's good, as the cards are cool and fun, I'm I'm content, right? As long as that is the the bare minimum we get, we're good. So that's all. Uh, I know it's probably gonna be a longer video than I think necessary, but hey, something to come back, something to warm back up to. Uh, also, just a reminder: this is technically a part one of two because the next video will more than likely be me kind of discussing about the state of Carpet Vanguard, the game, uh, from the Bush Rush Strategy Presentation. So with that, uh, if you want to see that, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.